Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It gives me great pleasure to join this conference from Denver, Colorado. My name is Poonam Bhatia and I am here to speak to you today about the importance of the three hour uninterrupted work cycle in providing children freedom to learn. It was over a hundred years ago that Dr. Maria Montessori made a discovery in the slums of Rome that changed the way the world viewed children. The secret of childhood was revealed to her by the children. And that secret was that children have an inner directive for their optimum self-construction and that concentration was the key to their natural development. Many years of observing children in the prepared environment convinced Dr. Montessori that the work of the child and the formation of the personality occurred during periods of intense concentration. She called this polarization of attention and drew our attention to the importance of creating an environment that, and I quote, protects the child from the difficult and dangerous obstacles that threaten him in the adult world. The shelter in the storm, the oasis in the desert, the place of spiritual rest ought to be created in the world precisely to assure the healthy development of the child. For this to happen, Dr. Montessori envisioned a prepared environment where children could develop unhindered, allowing them to reach their maximum potential. She believed that the children were active learners and scorned conventional classrooms where, in her words, children like butterflies mounted on pins are fastened each to his place the desk, spreading the useless wings of barren and meaningless knowledge which they have acquired. We know it is not natural for a child to sit in a chair for long periods of time and listen to a teacher. And yet we expect it all the time. Children learn by doing and individual activity is encouraged as every child learns at a different pace. Montessori believed that the hand is in direct connection with the individual soul and hence emphasized the connection between the hand and the brain. The child is given maximum hands-on learning for these concrete experiences form the foundation for abstract concepts. She advocated freedom as an ideal component for the young child to grow up in. And yet the idea of freedom is a very hard concept for most people to understand. Those who have attempted it without firmly grasping all of the concepts inherent within it have promoted a climate of permissiveness. It was never Montessori's intent to offer children freedom without limits or checks that would provide a balance for that freedom. She believed that all freedoms given to the child so that the child can make their own spontaneous natural development must be accompanied by responsibilities. If that requirement is not there, then the freedom will become license and chaos and confusion will be the result. Freedom is understood in a very elementary fashion as an immediate release from oppressive binds as a cessation of corrections and of submission of authority. 
This conception is mainly negative. That is to say, only the elimination of coercion. After her observations of children, Montessori concluded that for children to develop their potential, we must follow their needs. The child should be free to act. And this included freedom to move, freedom to talk and communicate, freedom of time, freedom to choose and pursue his own curiosities as they emerge, freedom to repeat as often as he liked, freedom to make mistakes. She said, let us leave the life free to develop within the limits of the good and let us observe this inner life developing. This is the whole of our mission. She believes strongly that all freedoms given to the child must be accompanied with responsibilities. In asking the child to be responsible for the freedoms given to him, we are providing an opportunity for the child to develop his ability to be responsible. This is such an inherent and important part of becoming independent as responsibility is intrinsic to independence. This development takes place within the prepared environment of which Montessori said, the environment must give the child every facility for concentration and choice. The objects in this environment should be retained with ease in the memory of the child. There should be a quantity of objects, all of which in due care, of course, a little child will be able to remember. He will also be able to remember the place where the object belongs so that after a time, the environment will no longer impress the child as something new. And thus, at this point, it will not distract his attention. It is the prepared environment that provides the child with direction. And this environment has been very carefully prepared by the teachers. To allow the child the possibility of exploring freely and developing his potential, the teachers have made sure that the environment is safe and the child is protected. Within the safe environment, the child has freedom of movement, freedom to explore, and the freedom to work alone or with others. The child cannot be let free in an environment without it being prepared to meet his needs. Independence and free choice go together and the environment must lead the child to independence. The core of the Montessori prepared environment and the key for concentration and optimal experience is the three hour uninterrupted work cycle. It is critical in providing children with the equilibrium of freedom and responsibility. Dr. Montessori believed that children needed sufficient time to delve into work, to concentrate, and to develop their inner guide. She considered that the required amount of time allows for a child to progress into the most in-depth concentration and intellectual exploration, resulting in the most significant growth. She noted that each time a polarization of attention took place, the child began to be completely transformed, to become calmer, more intelligent, 
and more expansive. She came to understand that children, when uninterrupted and left in freedom to choose work, displayed a distinct work cycle that was so predictable, it could even be graphed. This cycle with two peaks and one valley lasted approximately three hours. The following slides show you the curve of work within a three hour uninterrupted work cycle for children at various stages of development in our school. So I'm going to show this to you and let you look at this. This was the first um, graph that we plotted. And this is for a child that had just a, was at, in her first year in the Montessori school. And as you can see in this graph, that the child actually doesn't have many bursts of concentration to, so to speak. Um, she keeps going down the, the, val, the, the line of key sense and the concentration is really not a whole lot, except perhaps in the latter part when she is in the outdoor classroom and she's having snack. So when the, the, the line goes below the line of key sense, that's the time when she's at even She's distracted, she's interrupting other people, and this is what happens. Um, as they're given more and more time to be in the classroom, in the prepared environment, within the three hour uninterrupted work cycle, the child gradually develops from them larger bursts of concentration, as we call it. So I'm going to go into the next graph now. And this is one of a child who is in her second year in the Montessori classroom. So she's been there for a while. She knows what to expect. She knows that there's enough time. She knows where the materials are in the classroom. She knows when she can go and get, where she can go and get the work. If she needs help from another teacher or from a child, she does it. If she wants to work alone, she knows she can do it. And so in this case, you see, that she's not really ever gone down the line of key sense. So she's never really very distracted. She's never really um, bothering other children. Um, she stays just above the line of key sense. You know, there's a snack preparation that she does. And then there's a birthday celebration, which is a group time activity. But then as you can see, she rises above that and she goes into reading activities. She actually does some math work. Um, she goes into geography. Then after all of that, there's a short time of false fatigue, which is typically normal. And then she's outside, she's doing tire scrubbing and she's taking care of the plant. So she ends on her notes of really good concentration. And now this is the, the chart of a child who is in his third year in a Montessori prepared environment. And this is just absolutely amazing. So it begins um, with him just coming into the classroom and he does a puzzle, um, which lasts for about 10 minutes maybe. And then from there, it's immediately, he goes, he takes out, he chooses his own work, which is subtraction chart A. And he does that whole work. Look for how long he goes with it. You know, it's almost, I would say, an hour and 45 minutes that he's working on just that subtraction chart. Um, he's finishing the whole booklet. And, you know, as you know, this is a very abstract, um, one of our very abstract materials. And then he goes into reading. He does that for a little while. He goes into a short period of false fatigue, which he is actually when other children come and disturb him a little bit. And then he says that I'm going to do multiplication. So he moves on to another um, uh, math work and he does that. And then he actually spends the latter part of the morning work cycle reading to others. So you see how well above the line of key sense he is for the majority of the morning doing mostly math works at this time. 
So a lot of growth with the children when expectations are laid down very clearly, when they are within the three hour work cycle, within a prepared environment and given all the freedoms um, that, that Montessori speaks about, but with responsibilities. The three hour work cycle is representative of freedom within limits. At my school, which is Montessori Casa International in Denver, Colorado, children have three hours of open, uninterrupted time to choose independent work, become deeply engaged, and repeat to their own satisfaction. There are no bells that ring in my school, no morning recess to break up the morning work cycle. The day is not cut up into time segments of music, 20 minutes of art, you know, now you can have your snack, etc. the way it is in a traditional school. The children and the teachers work in unison during the morning, sometimes individually and at other times in groups. Sometimes they receive lessons and at other times they give them. When they need a break, they have a snack that they have prepared themselves earlier in the morning. The three hours gives the children plenty of time to move in and out of extended periods of concentration at their own pace. They follow their own inclinations and engage in activities that expand their cognitive, social, and motor skills. The main purpose of the three hour period is to provide the child with time to become fully immersed in his work. The concentration and focus required for full immersion takes time. For three hours, the child can choose a work, focus on that work, repeat that work many times and become fully engaged in the process before he moves on to the next work on his own terms, in his own time, and when he is completely ready and satisfied. That is not to say that a child will only choose one work. As you saw in the chart, he worked for a long time on that subtraction chart A, took a break from it, and then later on went, did some reading, went on to doing multiplication. So he chose several works. The goals of the three hour work cycle are to provide a child with enough time to deeply engage in his work, to reach a level of deep concentration, to feel excited about the work he has chosen and to feel a great sense of satisfaction at being able to complete the work. When a child is allowed that three hour window to work, there is a powerful feeling of success and confidence that radiates from within the child. Long term, the ability to choose a series of work from which the child derives success, he will then feel comfortable and confident enough to choose a task that is much more challenging. And this is where true learning comes in. There is a vital urge, Montessori says, to completeness of action. And if the cycle of this urge is broken, it shows in deviations from normality and lack of purpose. This is what makes Montessori unique. And as much as possible, the three hour uninterrupted work cycle should be respected. An interruption, no matter how beneficial an adult may consider it to be, disturbs the growing development of the child's concentration and focus. In fact, if children are aware that they may be interrupted during the course of the morning, they will not choose to work at all. Sometimes, as it happens in our school, a parent sends the child to school telling him that she will be picking him up early because there might be a doctor's visit that's coming in or the grandparents are coming into town. And so she informs, lets the child know that, you know, I'll pick you up before lunch. 
and the child we have noticed will not take out a work that will take him time to complete. You know, even if you suggest to him some work to do, he'll say, no, 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 my mom, and that might be still eight or nine o'clock in the morning. No, 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 my mom is coming, you know, to, to pick me up. So he will not take out a, a, a piece of work that will take him a long while to complete because he knows in the back of his mind that he's not going to be here for the whole morning work cycle. And this is something that I often explain to my own teacher trainees with a very personal question, that if you knew you had only 15 minutes to work on your essay, would you even start? And the answer inevitably is a no. However, how, do you, how can you even begin to concentrate knowing that you do not have that uninterrupted period of time to work? So if we know that for ourselves, why do we expect differently for the child? It is no different for the child. A pure, authentic Montessori school will not allow any interruptions during the work cycle. We have no art instructor pulling out a group of children and disturbing the whole class while doing so. In fact, we have a very rich art appreciation program that is one of the curriculum areas of the classroom. And the children have the freedom to choose to work with those materials just as much and as often as they work in sensorial or literacy. We believe that if the work cycle is interrupted and the children not given the freedom to choose within it, the child will never reach that deep concentration Montessori speaks about and that if the work cycle is shorter than three hours, the child's full development of concentration and focus may never occur. Our Chinese teacher does not come into the classroom mid-morning and give all the children a 30-minute lesson. She is with the children for the full day, speaking to them in Mandarin, giving them the Montessori presentations in Mandarin and taking care of them just as the English speaking teacher does. In providing children with the freedom to choose and move within the three hour uninterrupted work cycle and facilitating their learning, the adults prepare a favorable environment that meets the needs of the children and challenges them as well. The teachers use observation as a vital tool for understanding and nurturing the individual potential within each child by offering plenty of spontaneous opportunities for engagement in activities. When a child truly chooses a task and sees it to completion without any help, he is on his way to becoming a free, independent human being. Expectations for behavior to ensure the well-being and safety of everyone are laid down by the teacher at the beginning of the school year and gentle reminders are given whenever they are needed. So for example, that's what we will be doing in the beginning of the school year when we will insist that children walk properly through the classroom, not jump and run in the classroom. And then we will we term that as walking feet. So when we have to remind the child later on, if they are walking fast across the room, please use your walking feet. You've got to consistently remind them if they are not um, adhering to what we call classroom etiquette. To let the child do as he likes when he has not yet developed any powers of control is to betray the idea of freedom. If freedom is understood as letting the children do as they like, using or more likely misusing the things available, it is clear that only their deviations are free to develop. Their abnormalities will increase. 
the teachers are careful not to give too much freedom too soon. It begins with small steps. For example, asking the child to choose where he would like to work, whether it is a table or a mat on the floor, he can choose to work alone or with a group of children. However, all the freedom that he has been given is connected to work. There is no freedom not to work. And I'd like to repeat that. There is no freedom not to work, for it is only through work that a child can develop himself. What also makes Montessori education unique is that the child's freedom has limitations in the collective interest of the group. So for example, a child may choose work he has been given a presentation on, using it for the purpose for which it is intended, correctly and with respect. He is free to repeat an activity an indefinite number of times, as long as he is not disturbing others or destroying the materials. Those are two cardinal rules that we follow. You cannot disturb other children and you cannot destroy the materials. Respect is the bottom line. He has the freedom to interact with others or to be protected by others' intrusions. For example, if another child wants to come and watch a child work, he has to ask that child, can I be your observer? Montessori explains that the child must become of independent will by using in freedom his own power of choice. He must become capable of independent thought by working alone without interruption. A Montessori child has the freedom to work with his choice of material for as long as he wishes, but when he is done, it is his responsibility and his alone to put the material back on the shelf where he got it from. He respects his peers by putting it back the way he found it so it is ready for another child to use. If he had taken out a mat or a work rug, that must also neatly be put away. These are the foundations of self-discipline, which will see him in good stead later on in his life. I remember arguing with our licensing supervisor because she thought that part of our schedule should include the final 15 minutes um, of the morning work cycle as a cleanup time. And, you know, everybody should sing that song, clean up, clean up, everybody clean up. And I told her that we don't need to do that because a child is always cleaning up his work. He will never have a chance to take out two pieces of work um, because he has to put one away. And the only piece of work that's out is the one that he's working on. And he will put that away on his own before he comes to, to transition. I don't think she quite believed me about this, but she let it go and that was enough for me. The freedoms given to the child are all aided by the three hour uninterrupted work period, which allows a child enough time to really explore one or several areas of the curriculum and also have time to socialize with others. This is in deep contrast with the traditional schools Montessori was breaking away from where the child has no freedom and is at the mercy of the teacher who decides what activity will be done for what amount of time when the children sit in a circle and even when they are allowed to speak to the teacher or their peers. Here, if another child wants to join a child at work, he does not have to ask the teacher, but just go directly to the child. And, and the child has the right to say no. No teacher will interfere. 
in the right of the child to want to work alone. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Only normalized children aided by their environment show in their subsequent development those wonderful powers that we describe, spontaneous discipline, continuous and happy work, social sentiments of help, and sympathy for others. It is critical that all Montessori schools provide children with freedom to learn within the framework of a three hour uninterrupted work cycle knowing that it is the foundation for the child to achieve lengthened periods of concentration, discipline, and normalization. The environment with a balance of freedom and responsibility results in the child's spontaneous activity and engaged in real work of his own choice, a child seldom has the inclination to test the limits as he is interested and satisfied with his work and endeavors. This is the spontaneous discipline at work of which Dr. Montessori speaks. I'd like to conclude by sharing a video of our school and letting the children have the last word. Enjoy and thank you. <laughs> 